Now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed, starring Robert Young as Father. Another half hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. Through the ages, the search for buried treasure has led venturesome souls into daring exploits and colorful, exciting adventures. Although the occupants of the white frame house on Maple Street are not yet aware of it, there's a treasure hunt brewing right in their own backyard. At the moment, however, nothing unusual is in evidence in the Anderson household as the head of the family arrives for the noonday meal. And the youngest member of the tribe, Kathy, brings up a familiar and wholly innocent sounding question like this. Daddy? Yes, kitten? Daddy, can I ask you a personal question? I guess so. What is it? Can I have 39 cents? Well, that's pretty personal. Well, can I? Is that all you kids think about, money? I can't even get my hat off before someone asks me for money. Doesn't anybody around here like me for myself instead of my millions? I'm sorry, Daddy. Here, let me hug you. Well, now, that's more like it. Well, thank you, kitten. I tell you, that's a lot more satisfying, being welcomed home with a kiss. Now, can I have the 39 cents? <laughs> oh, me. Well, let's discuss it on the way out to the kitchen. I have to eat my lunch in kind of a hurry today. Just what do you need 39 cents so desperately for? I want to go to the movies this afternoon. Is that what they charge kids now, 39 cents? Oh, no, it's only 19 cents. But I need 10 cents for popcorn and a nickel for a strawberry ice cream cone on the way home. I see. Well, what's the other nickel for? Well, that's in case I wish I'd got chocolate instead of strawberry. <laughs> well, at least you're using a little foresight. Hello, Margaret. Lunch ready? No, not quite. Why, are you in a hurry? Well, as a matter of fact, I am, sort of. Daddy! I have to get out to the airport and meet Lewis, and he's coming in on the 140 plane. Who's coming in? Ed Lewison, the field representative from the home office. Just got a wire from him this morning. Daddy! Why do you always have to be the one that rushes out to the airport to meet everyone from the home office? Well, it's only natural. I'm head of the office here, and... Well, you don't want me to insult Lewison, do you? I don't know. You might try it once. Let him know that you're a pretty busy man, too. Daddy! Kathy, don't bother your father all the time. You can help set the table. Well, we've got some cash business to talk over. You can do that later. Your father has to rush out to the airport. Ah, I hear a young son tiptoeing downstairs. No, uh, he's been crashing around all morning. He's going through that annual ordeal of getting his things together for camp. Already? He doesn't leave for three weeks. I know, but he does this every summer. And then when it's time to go to camp, he's lost practically everything and has to do it all over again. <laughs> Daddy, 39 cents? Say, Mom, where's that army blanket that we... Oh, hi, Dad. You home? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico on a shrimp boat. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here, Dad, because I need some money to buy a camera. A camera? Yeah, for camp. They got it on the list here. Well, Bud, you don't have to take everything they put down on that list. Mom says I do. Well, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Don't you remember there were a couple of items on there I wasn't going to take and you said I had to? What kind of items, Bud? Well, this one right here, for instance. Soap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I can see how that would sound fairly frivolous to you. So how about the camera, Dad? Oh, I want is 39 cents, Daddy. It says here I'm supposed to take a tennis racket, too. But I can buy a second-hand one real cheap from Fletcher Browse. Now, wait just a minute. You kids seem to think I'm growing money on the bushes around here. Father! So we'd better have a little understanding. Father! Yes, Betty, how much do you want? What'd you say, Father? Never mind, I just somehow expected you to ask me for some money. Well, 
Well, as a matter of fact, I was going to. What? Betty, if you'll help Kathy put the things on the table, we can eat. Your father's in a big hurry. Oh, in a minute, Mother. You see, Father, Ralph has decided... Somehow or other, Ralph is fast becoming one of my least favorite acquaintances. <laughs> well, Ralph has decided that I should round out my personality development with an athletic program. And he's decided I should take up bowling. How nice of Ralph. <laughs> and in order to play it properly... You don't play bowling. You bowl. Well, whatever you do, to do it properly, Ralph says... Ralph says... You have to have bowling shoes. Oh, sure. And a bowling ball measured to your particular grip. An absolute must. So is that an unreasonable request, Father? No, I don't think it's unreasonable. And furthermore, I don't think it's unreasonable for me to tell you no. <laughs> what? 39 cents, Daddy. They got a camera at the drugstore for only $4.95. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, hold it. I don't know what's got into kids nowadays. Seems like you have to buy all your entertainment. Well, things aren't exactly free, you know, Father. Well, I don't know about that. Some of the best things are free. There's even a song that says that. Oh, sure. I'll give you the moon. What can we do with the moon? <laughs> have it measured to your grip and use it for a bowling ball. Jim, you'd better start eating if you want to get out to the airport. Oh, that's right. You know, I remember when I was a kid, we didn't have any money to throw away on entertainment. We made our own fun. Like how, Daddy? Oh, I don't know, different things. I remember we'd get up a little treasure hunt, bury something and then try to find it and dig it up. Some fun. Well, it was. Whoever'd bury the treasure would draw a map and the others would try to follow the map. Why don't you try it? Now, about that camera, Dad. Oh, me. <laughs> I'll try it, Daddy. I've got some time to kill before the movies start anyway. Betty, aren't you going to eat anything? Ralph says I'm putting on weight. Oh, for pity's sake. You're much too thin. I wish Ralph would mind his own business. Now, just how do you want me to do this treasure thing, Daddy? Well, Kathy, you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for yourself so you can have some fun. Anything you say, Daddy. Well, what you do is get something from everyone, put it in a tin can or a box, and bury it. And then draw a map. Hey, that might be fun. Bud, will you hunt for it? I've got to go over to Fletcher's and see about that tennis racket. No, I think you'd better stay here and join the treasure hunt. But it's on the list, Dad. And Fletch said his tennis racket was a clean deal. Real cheap. No strings attached. <laughs> Considering it's a deal with Fletch, I'd say you're lucky it has a handle. <laughs> Betty, can I have your rhinestone bracelet to put in the treasure? No. Now, don't take any of my good jewelry and bury it in an old tin can. See, Daddy, it won't work. How do you know? You haven't really tried yet. Here, Kathy, you can have this old pin of mine for your treasure chest. All right. Gee, I don't think this will work. It's kind of broken, Mommy. Well, that doesn't matter. Seems like kind of a cheap treasure hunt. Daddy, maybe you ought to give me a dollar to put in it. No, that's what I'm trying to get away from. Just use things around the house. Okay. But... No. I just want to use that jackknife you got hanging on your belt. No, I got that out for my cam stuff, and I don't want you to lose it for me. Oh, now, Bud, it isn't going to hurt you to let her take the knife. You'll get it back. But, Dad... The game is more fun if you use things of some value to the other players. What other players? Don't look at me. Well, I'll let her take some of my camping equipment, but not my knife. Kathy? Yes? In my room, lying on top of the sleeping bag is a thing you can use. Oh, boy! What is it? A bar of soap. <laughs> oh heck. That's no treasure. Well, it's part of my camping equipment, isn't it, Mom? It certainly is. Uh, Jim, do you want any more salad? Uh, yes, please. It's very good. Kathy, where are you going? You're not through eating yet. Yes, I am. I've got to start to gathering up the treasure. Well, what do we say when we leave the table? Goodbye. <laughs> uh, I mean, excuse me. That's better. Don't you take any of my jewelry. I won't touch the old junk. Dad. Father. Why don't you children leave your father alone for a few minutes? 
He's in a big hurry today. Has to meet a plane. Yeah, I know, but Dad... But right now, I don't care to discuss cameras or tennis rackets or bowling shoes or anything else. I wasn't going to ask you about any of them. You weren't? No. I just want to ask you about another item on my list. It's got me stumped. What is it, something mysterious like toothpaste? No, it says here, musical instrument. Well, why don't you take a piano? They're especially nice for hiking. <laughs> Fletch says he'll sell me a clarinet real cheap. That Fletch moves right in, doesn't he? He says it would be pretty light to carry because all the keys are broken off. <laughs> now, Bud, isn't that pretty ridiculous? What good would a clarinet be with all the keys broken off? What's the difference? I can't play it anyway. <laughs> Sounds like a red-hot bargain. Can I get it, Dad? No. Use your head, son. Father. Well, how about the camera? You can use that after I get home from camp. Father, I have to meet Ralph in about 20 minutes, and he expects me to go bowling with him. Well, that's fine. The exercise will do you good. But in order to play the game properly, one must have the proper... Oh, equipment. now, Betty, you don't have to have all that special stuff. At least not for the bowling you're going to do. Thousands of people bowl every day without any special equipment. But to play the game properly... Look, if you get to be a champion, I'll see that you have all the equipment you need. But, Father... I'll even get you a fur-lined ball for bowling in cold weather. <laughs> okay, Daddy. I'm all set with the treasure now. Where do I bury it? Well, don't ask me. That's supposed to be a secret. None of us is supposed to know where you bury it. Oh, I see. Well, okay, here goes then. Captain Kidd's treasure expedition. March, you men. Look alive. I hope she didn't get into my jewelry. Oh, don't worry so much about it. Don't spoil her fun. Well, I won't be here to spoil it. I've got to meet Ralph. Betty, I wish you'd eat a little more. You won't even be able to lift a bowling ball, let alone throw it. It doesn't matter anyway. My bowling career has just been utterly frustrated by lack of proper equipment. <sighs> Kids have certainly changed since I was a boy, believe me. Oh, you probably wanted things just as badly as they do. But it was on a different scale. There weren't quite so many things to want then. Oh, I don't know about that. The point is that we were resourceful and figured out... Dad. What is it, bud? If I could find you an ad showing that 495 camera they got at the drugstore, would it help you pick it out when you go down there? But I don't have time to go to the drugstore now. And besides, I'm perfectly capable of recognizing a camera when I see one. Well, I'll get the ad, just in case. I've got one up in my room. Oh, me. I don't believe those kids hear a single word I say. Well, I think they hear only what they want to hear. Did you have enough to eat? Oh, yes, plenty. Well, I guess I'd better head out toward the airport. Mother! Old Lewison isn't the kind who likes to stand around waiting for anyone. Oh, no, by all means, don't make him wait. Mother, have you seen any of my lipsticks? Why, no. I can't find a single one. Well, I didn't do anything with them. I know they were right on the dresser this morning when... Wait a minute. I'll bet I know. Kathy. Kathy? She put them in that buried treasure thing. Oh, wait till I get my hands on that little shrimp. Oh, now don't get so excited. It's just a game. But I can't go out looking like this. Ralph is waiting for me. Hey, Mom. He'll be ashamed to take me to the bowling alley. Oh, yes, you've got to dress real fancy to get into a bowling alley. <laughs> oh, that little whelp. Hey, Mom, did you take those flashlight batteries I had laid out with my camping equipment? No, I didn't touch them. <laughs> well, they're gone, and so is my compass. I'll tell you where they are. Kathy buried them in the treasure. What? She practically cleaned me out of everything. Oh, Betty, she did not. Holy cow. Nothing is safe around here with that little pickpocket. Oh, for goodness sake. There's nothing to get so upset about. You'll get all your stuff back. Can't you go along with a game? Father, Ralph is waiting for me. I've got to take that stuff to Cam. Well, it's not going to hurt you to go along with Kathy for a few minutes. Margaret, I have to hurry or I'll be late. All right, dear. Will you be home for dinner? I uh, think so. It all depends on Lewison. Do you have to have Mr. Lewison tell you when you can go home and eat dinner? Well, not that. Just that he's coming out here for some very important reasons, and... Hey. What's the matter? Where are my car keys? <laughs> well, well, where did you put them? Right on top of my hat. I put them there purposely so I'd be sure and... Wait a minute. I'll bet Kathy got them. What's the matter with that kid, anyway? It's only a game, Father. But... <laughs> Mr. Lewis and his... Oh, somebody go out and get Kathy and hurry. I think I hear her coming now. Daddy! Oh, 
Oh, what does that girl use for brains? <laughs> Kathy! Oh, are you ready to play now, Daddy? Here's the mail. Kathy, I haven't got time to play games. Go out and dig up that treasure right now. But I can't. I don't know where it's buried. <laughs> what? I wanted to play, too. So I had Patty Davis bury it. Well, get Patty Davis, then. Well, she just left for the movies. Oh. Well, don't worry, Daddy. We'll find the treasure. How? All we have to do is follow the map she drew. Oh, no. We return to the Andersons in a moment. Greater happiness for more people. That's the result of many decades of proving that the American economic system is the best system in the world. Under this system, we've been able to outproduce any other nation, to turn out more goods and services per man hour, and to enjoy a steadily rising standard of living. Remember, the better we produce, the better we live. <laughs> If any of you folks are interested in buried treasure, I know where you can find some. It's hidden somewhere in the backyard of the white frame house on Maple Street. The treasure chest consists of a tomato can, which contains, among other things, two flashlight batteries, some lipsticks, and the keys to Jim's car. This last item is the one that's causing considerable furor in the Anderson household at the moment. Like this. Of all the things to bury in that can. But, Daddy, you told me to get something from everybody. How am I going to use my flashlight at camp with no batteries? Oh, quit worrying about your batteries. I can't even start the car. My good lipsticks. Jim, you were the one who started this buried treasure idea. I didn't tell her to put my keys in there. I had them right there on my hat. I couldn't put the hat in. <laughs> she wouldn't fit. I can't go bowling without lipstick. I'll look like a ghost. No, oh, for goodness sake, calm down. You'd think it was the end of the world. Margaret, if it isn't the end, it's pretty close to it. <laughs> Lewison's plane is due right now, and if I'm not there to meet him... Well, dear, why are you standing here waving your arms and shouting? All you have to do is go out in the backyard and dig up that can. Oh, Margaret, I haven't time to go out and play bloodhound to a tomato can. <laughs> When the head of the home office is practically breathing down my neck... How long would it take you to find it? Patty Davis probably buried it in the most obvious place. Obvious place? Look at this map she drew. Looks like a blueprint of the Pentagon. <laughs> oh, dear. Mother, why don't you make Kathy find it? I don't know where Patty buried it. She can't find it, Betty. Well, make her. She can't find it if she doesn't know where it is. Well, make her. If my stuff is lost, I'm gonna sue her. Sue who? Sue you, that's who. This can't be a map of our backyard. Look what she has here. Three paces from the old cannon's mouth toward Buzzard's Bay. <laughs> well, we might go out and look, dear. Nothing doing. I'm going to call a cab. What's the number? Daddy, you told me about the game. You told me yourself. It's 771, Father. Thanks. I told you about the game, but I didn't suggest sabotage. I didn't put any of that in. Any of what? Any sabotage. <laughs> I don't think we have any. <coughs> oh, that aboriginal child. Hello, cab company? Uh, this is Jim Anderson, 607 Maple Street. I want a cab out here fast. I've got to get to the airport. All out? Don't you have anything down there with wheels on it? <laughs> no, later won't do me any good. Oh, thanks very much. What did they say, dear? Oh, the cabs have all been reserved for the convention. A big mob in town. The pickle packers or something. <laughs> you can use my motor scooter, Dad. Oh, great. I can see myself riding Mr. Lewis and back to town on your scooter. Lord Messer's hand rides on the back of his, and she used to be a school teacher. Maybe you could borrow Ralph's car. Ralph's car? All four wheels go in different directions. <laughs> Every time you put on the brakes, the hood flies up. I'd be better off on the scooter. The children are only trying to help, dear. Uh, maybe I could borrow Ed Davis's car. Well, the Davises have gone to the movies. Oh, for Pete's sake. What about the Phillips, Margaret? They're at home. Their car isn't working. Mrs. Phillips parked pretty close to a fire plug. Well, that couldn't hurt the car. She parked on top of it. <laughs> 
order. It came right up through the floorboards. <laughs> oh, there must be a car someplace. It looked like Old Faithful. <laughs> Dear, you're just wasting time arguing in here. You might have found the keys and been halfway to the airport. Let's go out and follow the map, Daddy. I'm going up and check all my things, and if anything else is gone, Kathy, I'm going to take you apart. You might find them, Jim. I'll pulverize that little worm. <laughs> all right, come on, bud. I don't know where to dig for that darn thing, Dad. I'll help you, Daddy. Have you got the map? Yes, I've got the map. I'll be out in a minute, dear. I have to put the butter and cream in the refrigerator. Oh, this is just dandy. There couldn't be a better time to play pirates in the backyard. Now, here's where we start, Daddy. You see, on the map it says, walk from the corner of the stockade. This is the garage. That's the stockade. Anybody would know that. Okay, now, gotta keep an eye on the longboat yonder. If them yellow-livered twabs catch a sight of us, not a man will come out alive. Holy cow. <laughs> Kathy, we're not playing pirate. Have you found it, dear? Found it? We haven't even started. We're still swashbuckling. <laughs> I can just picture Lewis and standing around the airport boiling. Well, I've often thought I wanted to get out of the insurance business. Looks like I'm going to get my wish. Oh, Jim, stop carrying on. The plane may be late. Besides, Mr. Lewison can wait a few minutes. That's what you think. Time, Tide, and Lewis, and wait for no man. Where's that silly map? Here's the first clue. From the corner of the stockade to the river. Ten paces. Oh, that Patty Davis. What's she talking about a river? There's no river back here. Hey, I'll bet I know what it is. The water faucet. It's the same thing as a river. Did you ever see a river with a meter on it? <laughs> I think Bud's right, dear. All right. Ten paces. I suppose they'd be short ones if Patty Davis was the pirate that laid this thing out. Wait, let's see the map. Hmm. Now, if we were right about the river, then at ten paces you should be able to turn and look through the crotch of the oak tree and see an eagle's nest. Eagle's nest? Say, we're right. I can see through the crotch of the tree and there's the nest. See any eagles? <laughs> no, it's a robin's nest or something, but it's a nest. We're on the right track. Oh, boy. Let me have the map, Daddy. No, let me hold it, kitten. I'm getting the hang of this thing now. Hmm. You'd better hurry, dear. Avast, matey. We're on the trail of the doubloon. <laughs> Before the tide turns, we'll find the Spanish gold. Spanish gold? In a tomato can? <laughs> now, standing under the eagle's nest, seven paces toward the cannon's mouth. Now, what in the dickens is the cannon's mouth? Could that be Mr. Beckett across the street? <laughs> he has a mouth like a cannon. Kathy. You should hear him holler. Hey, maybe it's the end of the drain spout. That looks like a cannon. Blimey, lad, you're a bright one. I'll wager a quid you've struck it. Push on, my hearties. This is kind of fun, huh, Dad? Sure is, isn't it, Daddy? Well, I told you this was a good game, kitten. We played it all the time when we were kids. Are we getting close to the treasure, Captain Daddy? Aye, aye, me bucko. Hey, Dad, the Smiths are watching us from their yard. Keep your powder dry, matey. We'll tend to those swabs later. <laughs> Dear, hadn't you... Steady, uh, mate. I'm having a spot of trouble here with Pegleg Davis's map. Dear, if Mr. Lewis and Margaret, is... don't worry about Lewis and he can wait a while. <laughs> oh, I can, can I? Mr. Lewis. Uh... How did you get here? I, I mean, when did you... I thought you were going to meet me at the airport. Uh, oh, yes, I was, but uh, uh, how did you get here? I had to hitchhike. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Mr. Lewis and my family, Mrs. Anderson, uh, my son and daughter, uh, Bud and Kathy. How, how do you do, 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 Mr. Lewis? Lewis? How do you do? Well, Anderson, what happened? And if I may say so, it better be good. Well, you see, a, a very strange thing happened. The, the keys to my car, you probably won't believe this, but they're buried somewhere in the backyard here. Buried? The keys to your car? I know it sounds a little unusual. Unusual? That is a masterpiece of understatement. I'm furious with you, Anderson. Quite furious. Mr. Lewison, it wasn't his fault, really. It, it was my fault, Mr. Lewison. I, I was playing treasure hunt, and we buried the keys to the car in our treasure chest. 
Well, Kathy didn't realize when she took the keys that Mr. Anderson was just getting ready to leave for the airport. She took a lot of stuff. My flashlight batteries, even. I had to have a treasure. See, we even drew a map for it. Oh, you did, eh? Let me see that. Hmm. <laughs> well, well. Looks like the treasure maps I used to draw when I was a boy. Uh, Mr. Lewison, if you want to get down to the office, There's we can... There's plenty of time to go to the office. <laughs> what does this mean here? Twelve paces toward the pieces of eight. Maybe that means you go toward the bank. Mm, I doubt it. Margaret, he's warming up. Invite him for dinner, quick. Uh, Mr. Lewison, uh, you'll join us for dinner tonight, won't you? Dinner? Be delighted. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I'll run in and let you discuss your business matters. Well, Mr. Lewison, would you like to go inside? We can talk in the den. I've asked you, Swab. There's treasure on this island. <laughs> and by the great horn spoon, we're going to find it. Come on, mate. Where were you, matey? Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, shiver my timbers. The Andersons will be right back. This is a call to service for 50,000 young women. That figure, 50,000, is the number of student nurses needed this year. To qualify as a student nurse, a young woman must be a high school graduate or a college student of good health and character. To answer this call, go to your nearest hospital or collegiate school of nursing or talk with your school advisor. Well, the treasures in the old tomato can have been recovered and the backyard pirates have put away their muskets and settled back to life as usual. And since all is calm for the moment, Jim Anderson steps out of the living room of the white frame house on Maple Street for a word with you. Mr. Robert Young. Thank you, Bill. Well, folks, we had quite a time with our treasure hunt in the backyard, didn't we? Anyway, the Andersons are going to take a little vacation for the summer. It's been a very pleasant season, and we hope that some of the things that have happened in our home remind you of things that have happened in your own. So until next fall, have a nice summer, drive carefully, enjoy yourselves. And here's the family, Margaret, played by Jean Vanderpile. Happy vacation. Betty, played by Rhoda Williams. Goodbye. I hope you all have a simply perfect, but utterly perfect summer. And Bud, played by Ted Donaldson. So long. Bud, can't you say anything but so long? Holy cow. <laughs> That's better. And last, but believe me, not least, Kathy, played by Norma Jean Nilsson. Have fun. See you in the fall. Good night. And our cast tonight were Bill Foreman as the narrator, and Mr. Lewison was Jim Nusser, Don Stanley speaking. Father Knows Best, directed by Andrew C. Love, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. Attend the Republican Convention on NBC. Yes, beginning next Monday, NBC's crack news staff of more than 300 men will bring you all the important news emanating from the Republican Convention in Chicago. The fight promises to be hot as Taft and Eisenhower vie for nomination. And a deadlock between these two candidates could find an unexpected dark horse in the Republican nomination for the presidency. To hear all the drama and news that next week will bring, keep your radio dial tuned to the NBC radio network. And here, Counter Spy on NBC. Now keep tuned for Dragnet on NBC.